<laughs> Hi guys. Hi. Hi everyone. Right, we're gonna get started because there are quite a few of you already. Um, we're going to be experimenting with ink again today. Um, all you need is a brush. It can be any kind of brush. Um, I'm going to talk about working with just um, any kind of papers today because a lot of you asked me if you needed special papers and I don't want you to spend a lot of money on expensive paper if you're still experimenting. So, um, <clears throat> I'm going to I'm going to show you a few different normal papers you can find around the house. Um and we're going to see how ink reacts to them. Um I've got a couple of um bottles of ink in different colors, but for today you only really need one if you don't have um very many. Uh black will do and Indian ink. Um but if you've got color that's really great. Um hi if you've just joined. I'm just going to rotate my screen so you can all see my table and we'll get started. So I've got a few different papers. I've got, uh, this is like a printer kind of paper, which is a little bit thicker than normal printer paper. It's like a very thin card. Um, I don't know how this reacts to ink, but I've got a couple of pieces here, so we're going to give that a go. I've got normal kind of cartridge paper, which is something you could find in a sketchbook, um, but it's very similar also to just normal paper. It just absorbs ink a little bit better than something you'd grab off your printer. And then I've got some nicer paper, which is... Um, an Indian Cardi paper, which is made of cotton rag. Um, it's usually recycled um, and this absorbs ink really well. Um, and we'll have a go with that too. And I've also got some strips of that because I normally chop down my paper for different pieces of work. So normally I start with these kind of pieces <clears throat> and I normally work with testing out the colors that I have or just seeing how they flow. So I'm going to do some Indian ink today and it's just a black ink. Just got a bit of water and I've got a bit of tissue, a uh, kitchen towel just to dab my brush. I'm going to start with a quite big brush. Um, you can literally use kids' art brushes, anything that you have um, to just start playing with ink. And I'm going to put some water down on the paper. <clears throat> if you've got a pipette, then it's quite nice. But um, Indian ink spreads quite nicely on paper. It's quite an organic material uh, you could use a toothpick if you wanted to do something very similar if it if your ink doesn't have a pipette in it And if you're doing this with watercolours, you've just got to work with a bit more water. Um, I don't know how big your um, pans are, 
but if you've got a black just give it a bit more water and it will act a little bit more like ink This paper's buckling, but it could work to your be to your advantage and help you spread the ink to create some really cool patterns. <clears throat> so little scraps of paper are really good for getting started. Um, just to see how ink acts and as they dry you can use them to inform how you might work on bigger pieces later. So this is still watercolour. There's no reason why you can't play with ink and watercolour. going to switch colours. If you've got another colour, great. If not, um, carry on going in whatever you've got. I normally decant a bit of my ink, so if I over dilute it, I can just chuck it away and it doesn't ruin the ink that's left in the bottle. <coughs> this kind of thing don't worry too much about having water that's not clean um because sometimes you can get really cool experiments Again, because this piece is quite thin paper, you can just manipulate the paper a bit. And that will dry and be completely different to how it looks now. few <clears throat> brushes to play with um, some brushes which are you might have lying around if someone's ever bought you a calligraphy set but that's um, something I got in a secret Santa and it's quite um, common that people buy them if you like messing around with calligraphy But if you find that you really love playing with ink, then I would invest in a mop brush. And this is basically... Uh, 
Um, if you've just joined me, I can't really see my screen because I've suspended it above my desk. But if you have any questions, you can just type them in and I will answer them towards the end. <clears throat> We're just experimenting with any ink that you might have at home or watercolour. Just getting different patterns down. I like to use lots of scrap pieces of paper for this. If you've got watercolours um, and not ink today, then just give your pan a really good wash of water and it will work in a similar way to ink. And if your paper buckles, um, and you didn't see this earlier, I just take the paper and allow the ink to flow across. I was talking earlier about different kinds of paper. Um, if you've just got scraps of paper lying around the house that you've bought to, for today, this is um, a printer paper. It's just like a... Um, a, a, a very thin card um, and we're going to see how ink works across this um, I don't want you to invest in lots of really beautiful papers if you're just having a go and you don't know whether this is for you so we'll start with just playing again I'm going to put some water on this is normally how I'd experiment. <laughs> and the inks I use can vary from drawing inks to calligraphy inks. Um, the ink I'm using right now is also, it's just a pen ink. So what you would put in a fountain pen but I like to see how these work. They don't usually last very long in the sun, so if you are wanting to do some drawings with this that you want to go on and sell, I wouldn't recommend it because they do tend to fade, um, but I had to learn them the hard way. <clears throat> but they're really beautiful for how organic they can be and how they spread. Um, some permanent inks don't react the same way. So that is just a printer paper for any of you We'll use uh, another, the other half of that. Adding some curves, we can see how the ink will flow a different way. So, we're just experimenting with how it flows. It's going to keep moving as the drawing dries. Just 
just going to move some bits out of the way. <clears throat> see that there are some questions don't worry I will answer oh I just can't see my screen at the moment but I'll answer them towards the end and I've got here another kind of paper which is just like I just grabbed these sheets from my kids um art books um i know that many people in my uh, many of my followers are parents so you probably got some of these lying about but it's just very cheap paper nothing fancy um and we're going to see how ink works on here So I'm going to mix a couple of colours. If you've got a couple of colours, great. If not, then um, keep going with your one colour. Don't worry about having clean water. We're just experimenting. You can see this paper, because this paper is thinner, it tends to buckle, but it doesn't stop you from experimenting. And if you've got smaller pieces, it will buckle less or you can control the paper a bit more. If the paper's really big, it's really going to buckle. If you're doing this with watercolours, um, you just keep adding more water. You want to get a bit more watery than you would normally. <coughs> We're just dropping the different colours on there, seeing how they react. So, if you do have some nicer paper to hand, um, 
we're now going to have a go on that. I cut mine really small today so we can do a lot of experiments. Um, if your water's really filthy and you want to change it, um, you can, but it doesn't really matter. I often like to paint, when, especially when I'm experimenting with inks and checking out new colours, I often try to experiment with moons because you can add all these different colours. Like my, my water's really filthy, um, but it's not going to change how these drawings come out. If you haven't got anything to drop your ink on with, just pour a bit into the cap and just pour it on. And if you're really curious about colour, just get them all down. It's nice when they mix together and then become really unpredictable. I kind of want to see how this reacts, but I'm going to be a bit gentle about it so I don't coax out too much colour. You can manipulate the ink even more by just flipping the paper. <coughs>
you wanted to get a bit delicate you could get a really tiny brush in there There we go. I'm going to quickly look back over any questions. So if you wanted to type any in. Um, but I think that was my quick um, go at having a play with ink. So if you've got, got any questions, I'll answer them now. <coughs> Someone asked if the inks fade so much, why do you use them? Um, recommend for longer lasting art. Um, I use them because all inks act really differently. And I love it when inks do things like this. Um, but you can't replicate that in all kind of inks. Um, permanent inks have things like acrylics in them and alcohols, which react very differently when they're on paper. Natural inks, which are the ones which tend to fade, do these really softer, um, beautiful things, which you only really figure out by playing around with them. Um, so this is a pen ink, which generally will fade if it's in direct sunlight. You can, um, there are ways to make these last longer um such as you could either scan them and print them or you could um spray them with a fixative and then frame the artworks um with a uv glass and obviously most artworks you shouldn't especially original ones you shouldn't hang in direct sunlight anyway but for example this is one that we did earlier and these patterns where it separates, especially if inks are old as well, like um, pen, a lot of pen inks do this, they separate into different colours, um, especially with water. They're not, I, I think it's because they're not meant to be mixed with water. <coughs> um, but if you didn't do it, you wouldn't get this anyway. And um, you could scan this and print it and create 
um, printable drawings, but this original drawing will definitely fade over time. Um, some um, am I self-taught or did I study art? Study art. I am a bit of both. I did a degree in architecture. Um, I didn't do art as a degree, but. Um, in terms of the way that I work, I like to um, teach myself how to experiment with different materials. Um, I think it's one of the nicest bits about art, playing with materials that you love and just seeing how they react. Um, and that's that element, I guess, is self-taught. Um, architecture doesn't isn't taught... Um, like an, an art degree would be taught. So a lot of my work, I guess I've, um, I have self-taught in that respect. Do you need an art degree to be an artist? Definitely not. Um, it depends what you want to achieve, but education is um, important. And I do think that it can help if you want to pursue art as a career, um, but it isn't always necessary and practice, practicing your skill is something that um, only you can do and you can do it both on a course and in your own time, but if you are on a course, you will also need to keep practicing. What kind of colours do I use? Mainly, mainly I use blue. Um, I have lots of other colours because I like doing this kind of stuff and just seeing what happens, but that's mainly for me. But when it comes to my main work, it's always blue. And I think that's about it. What was the name of the brush I recommended? It is um, a mop brush. Um, you can get them, if, just give me a second. They look like this. And they just flow really nicely, especially when you're experimenting this way. They are quite pricey. Um, this very big one, for example, can be about £20 just for a brush, so you do need to look after them. Um, these brushes are two, three years old um, and still look very good. But um, it's all about taking care of your materials and um, they will last for a long time. Thank you. Um, I'm going to leave you now. hope you keep painting and have fun. Thanks a lot. Bye. Oh, how do I look after brushes? Um, always wash them afterwards and try to um, dry them either flat on a piece of tissue um, so the water doesn't soak back into the wood or um, you can get holders that help you to dry your brushes so that um, it's basically you don't want the, the water soaking back into the wood so that they split. Um, but always if the brush is clean, and it and it doesn't have ink and stuff on it. It won't stick together um, whilst it's drying. So just wash them thoroughly. Um, dry them flat, perhaps on a piece of tissue paper if possible. Um, and yeah. Thanks for joining me, everyone. Bye.